Hey Vikings fans, Tyler here to talk to you about pick and shovelware and pickandshovelware.com. T-shirts, sweatshirts, all kinds of fun, different Minnesota sports clothing items and apparel options. We got a deal going with them right now where if you buy whatever you want, enter the promo code bleeding purple, all one word, and you will get free shipping. That is promo code bleeding purple pickandshovelware.com. Make sure you go ahead and check it out. Okay, let's start the show. Welcome in to Bleeding Purple, a podcast about the Minnesota Vikings. My name is Tyler Egg, and I am joined, as always, by Mr. Adam Patrick. Hello, good sir. How are you? Well, we're on the Super Bowl. Woo! I don't see a win. I've been looking at the schedule, and I don't see a loss. That's a loss. what I meant. I don't see a loss. I don't see a loss. <laughs> They're so good. It was so good. All right, let's yep. start with the preseason review, obviously. Get your, get your, get your Atlanta tickets right now. So, Book your hotel. They look pretty good. First team looked pretty good. If you listen to Vikings yep. Twitter, you should get your non-refundable plane ticket to yep. Atlanta right now. That being said, um, actual – okay, first, actual review, they wound up winning the game. I think it was 42-20-something, 20 28 was the yep. – <clears throat> yep, yep, yep. Not that it matters because it's the preseason, but the first team, Kirk oh. Cousins, looked good. Diggs made a good catch. They are only out there for one yeah. drive, but it was pretty impressive. The offensive line looked really good. What uh, what did you take away from the preseason game, specifically with like the first team, the starters? No, I, should, I don't even want to call them starters because they're not. A lot of those offensive linemen are not starters. Not the offensive line, but yeah, but yeah. The, the rest of the offense. Yeah. Well, not Dalvin. Well, I guess not Dalvin Cook. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, first yeah, Kirk, Kirk, Kirk Cousins uh, is better than Case Keenum. I would agree. Yeah. That was uh, very obvious in that game, considering they were facing each other. Maybe a small sample size, um, but, uh, no, but no, you know, it's we're going to see season. But I'm pretty sure um, Case Keenum is not capable of throwing that laser that Kirk Cousins threw to Stefan Diggs. That was just right in his. Uh, how do you say bread basket? Threw him open, Adam. Yeah, that's what he did. Yeah. Is he threw him open? I mean, yeah, that was good coverage by the Broncos cornerback. Like he was all over him, and Kirk Cousins just was like, "Ping!" Yeah, right in there. They're just too good. And, uh, you, know, you can have perfect coverage, but it doesn't matter. Now with <laughs> Latavius, Latavius Murray had some some nice runs, a couple of twenty yard runs there. So he looks good. Uh, he didn't play last preseason. Preseason because no, of his ankle injury. Yeah, yeah, he was still recovering. And That's right, and he started so slow early last year that yep. it wasn't until like about halfway through the year when we actually started to see what he could do. So that's good to have from your, you know, third down, second string, I guess, running back. He'll probably get more carries earlier in the year than he does for the remainder of the year because they ease Delvin Cook in. But and then on the other side of the ball, the defense looked really good. Like. Shut down Case Keenum. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, I think actually on who, the first, who, well, we should we should say Case Keenum, <laughs> who looked amazing, who was so good in training camp that when he finally threw an interception, the Broncos yeah. defense looked at all of the media and were yeah. like, "Make sure you report that and tweet that because it hadn't happened." Yeah, yeah, but, not a big uh, deal yeah. for this defense though. No problem. No, I think uh, through the first drives, I think the Broncos had like 12 plays for 15 yards. So the Vikings' first and second team defenses did did pretty well. Mm-hmm. It's not like the Broncos. Broncos don't have like playmakers on their offense. They have Manuel, Emmanuel Sanders and Demarius Thomas. Mm-hmm. So they have some guys that can make plays. But the Vikings' defense was still good without Linval Joseph in there. They had uh, Sheldon Richardson and. Julio Johnson did good. Mike Hughes looked good. 
on defense. Return, he had that little little fumble on the kickoff return there. But, you know, it's his first game. Yeah, nerves. Nerves. Get those barely, out of there. Kickoffs are barely even. Uh, uh, Daniel anymore. Carlson looked good. Speaking of rookies, he had a nice 57-yard field goal. Looked like it could be good probably like 65 yards if he really Yeah, he booted that ball pretty try. good. That was, I was uh, ready for that to be like a squibbed disaster yeah. that we got to laugh at. And he, he made all made yeah. all his extra points, made the 39-yard field goal. Kai Forbath attempted no field goals and extra points. I don't that should tell you a lot. Um it's pretty good. 42 points, you know, great show on turf part two coming up. <laughs> so, you know, I didn't know, realize this offense was that potent, but to go along with the defense, I'm not really sure how any team's gonna be able to hang out. I mean it's it's just too good. All right, let's 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 do <laughs> let's do a little bit of uh, over overreacting. Let's do let's do this uh, preseason overreaction. Yes, it's preseason, but we've seen a lot, and so let's make let's make some some big statements here about this football team, Adam. Preseason um, overreaction. You know, I'm going to go first, and I think that. Pat Elfline should be, uh, you know, watching out for his job because Cornelius Edison played so well, and that offensive line looks so good that these starters better be on notice, man. They, uh, they, they better be on notice because can't make, can't make the club from the tub. Mm-mm, you can't. That's a great way to put that. That's very preseason overreaction. The best availability. No, oh, man, I ruined my favorite saying. Okay. <laughs> Your turn. <laughs> Um, I mean, speaking of jobs, Dalvin Cook, he's got to, you know, keep his eyes behind his back because <laughs> Rock Thomas is creeping up there. He's coming for that job. I'm smelling S- what Rock 70, Thomas is cooking. Yeah, 78. <laughs> yeah, woo! 70, God, I'm glad I got you. <laughs> oh, man. I was so excited. 78-yard touchdown on the screen pass. <laughs> Caught two touchdowns, actually. Mm-hmm. So, I mean. When's the last time Dalvin Cook caught two touchdowns in the NFL? I Ever. can't remember it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Daniel Carlson. So I give him, give him the gold jacket now. Fifty-seven yards, <laughs> first preseason game. Give me a break. He's going to change, change the trajectory of this franchise from a kicking standpoint forever. We'll think about Daniel Carlson the way, the way they think about Michael Jordan in Chicago. Where, like, it was just nothing before. The Bulls were nothing before he showed up. Danikowski is an afterthought for you. That's right. Yes. Which is a big thing for me to say. Preseason overreaction. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, those 42 points, this high-powered offense. Actually, you know what? Those 42 points were part of Kyle Sloter's doing. So... Kirk Cousins, you know, even though they paid him $84 million, he should be watching out for his job. Kyle Sloter, two touchdown drives, including a rushing touchdown. Yeah, let's just say there are a lot of teams that would take Kirk Cousins right now. And yeah. we might make put him on the, if we put need him on to. The block. Put him on the block. Just see what they're offering, you know, see what you can get. Because he got a you know, good backup plan. You can get a fourth-round pick for Kirk Cousins. you got to take that. Mm-hmm. Over that's, where I, that's where I'd set the bar. That's right. <laughs> oh, that was good. Really good uh, preseason overreaction there. Adam. Totally was, serious. Uh, yep, totally serious, and that felt really good. Um, in reality, and in not overreacting fashion, I was very impressed with that offensive line. I thought that that was going to be a little bit of a dumpster fire, but I was very impressed with Cornelius Edison, and I was very impressed with um, mm, who was the other one that impressed me? Isadora. Yes, Danny Isadora. Not impressed with Avion Collins. We'll talk about the pronunciation in a second. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just was. I don't, I don't know. I, I when I watch games, I don't really pay attention. Like to the offensive line, so it's mm-hmm. usually something I watch when I watch it again. I haven't watched it again. Yes, closely. I watched it again, and I did watch that line. Yeah, you said you've had some free time. I have. Recently, so, yes. so. <laughs> no kids. It's amazing. Um, but yeah, when if I when I watch that again, I noticed like so I watched the first couple drives again, and I noticed like Tom Compton was kind of getting like pushed down his heels and stuff like that, and Rashad Hill a couple of times. But 
Mm-hmm. You know, they, it's their first game too, so they got to get in the flow. Um, but yeah, and they've been it going also up helps, the same guys. Yeah, it also helps that the offensive coordinator is not calling seven step drops on every play call. It seems like John DeFilippo's, you know, his play calling is a lot of quick stuff, like, you know, shotgun handoffs. And then, you know, even if it is a long play, it's one's leading digs down the field. So yeah. that's off play action or whatever. It's yeah, not long like, plays, not long developing plays. Yeah, you're not sh- going for deep shots down yeah. the field. I, I don't think we're going to see too many 50-yard bombs this year from the Vikings offense. Mm-hmm. I would agree so, with that. That makes the offensive line look maybe better than it actually is, too. I would agree. And I think also that uh, Pat Shermer did a fair amount of that last year, yeah. using yeah. screens and quick passes and things like that to help Case Keenum look better, to help the offensive the, line look better. And At the same time, the run blocking looks good. I mean, yeah. Tavis Henry got sprung for those holes, and the other guys, I think there were a, a ton of like carries for a loss, even with the backup running backs. A lot of those guys got some good positive yards yardage so for sure yeah i think the negative plays the ones that i remember was there was a sack uh, on simeon and i'm not sure a lot of people are saying that that was was more his fault center running back i can't tell who was supposed to because it was a blitz a safety blitz and it came right up the middle and i don't know if it was supposed to be the center who was was supposed uh, to take him or if it was a i don't know protection wise but it's possible that that was a running back because i'm not sure if like the offensive lineman because you see those all the time where, like the offensive lineman just goes the other way completely away from the blitzer and, and i'm not sure if they they think that the running back running back is able to yeah pick that up or or the guard is able to pick that up but for sure that's and, something you know yes to get sorted out in preseason and uh, in before leading up to the season exactly and those, right. it, those guys that do that they're not going to be starting so no. the guys that are starting should be able to pick that up yes and i also, think also riley reese I think he's so underrated. Yeah, so good. He's, he's good. He's solid out there. Super. And he's and good. and especially now when you're comparing him to the line that they kind of had out there, it's noticeable. He was going against like Bradley Chubb and mm-hmm. Shane Ray and stuff. Like, he's good. Yeah, Bradley Reef is good. Definitely. I was I was very impressed with the uh, the offensive line play. Very much so. Also, back to real quick on the. Uh, about like watching stuff again and protection stuff. How are we to know what a the protection call was? B if it had yeah. been changed by somebody. So yeah, it's like even if you see somebody that walks away from, were they expecting that? Was he wrong? Was the guy who was supposed to pick it up wrong? We don't know. We don't know. Pre- yeah, preseason is weird too because they don't really run their offense. They're just trying to like figure stuff out. Just maybe see how different plays work. It's really. Like, you know, you hear a lot of teams say that they didn't game plan, and that's mostly they say when they lose, but they, um, yeah. most of the teams that win do that too. They just go out there and just call whatever and then. Mm-hmm. Base plays, See go for it. Very, uh, very score impressive. And score, score 42 points. Yeah. And look good. And at, from from the starter, or starters, from the first team's perspective, like, that's what we wanted. They looked clean, they looked efficient, they went down, they scored a touchdown. Put the hat on, have some Gatorade, chill out for a little bit. Let's watch these other dudes. That's what you want. Think I, about how I bad know. we would be panicking if Kirk Cousins would have thrown an interception on that drive. Yeah. Vikings Twitter would be well, out well, fire well, look still. At, well, still. Look at, look at the Broncos. I saw something today where people are already worried about uh, Case Keenum. After one preseason game. After I'm like, one preseason game. Hey, give him a chance. I know he didn't look the greatest, but you know, that's a good defense. He's not on the other yeah, side. Yes. Yeah. So. Yes. That too, but he can do other things besides just drop back and stay in the pocket. Keenum's mm-hmm. better, I think, when he's on the move, running away from pressure and stuff like that, and creating stuff. I so. would agree with that completely. Give, I'm I'm not the biggest Case Keenum lover, but you know, give the guy a chance. It's mm. the first preseason game. He was in there for two series, so. I think he'll be better than uh, what he oh, showed, for sure. And uh, Mike Zimmer never lost a preseason opener. So the Vikings okay. come out to play in the preseason under Mike Zimmer. What is his like preseason record? He only has one preseason loss like ever, doesn't he? One or two? I think two. I think two. Uh, I mean, can't go wrong with that kind of a record. Even if it is just a preseason, I'll take it. 
you know what, also uh, the, Cleveland, the Cleveland Browns have won five straight preseason games brutal so. why are you bringing that up when I was being positive <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, shame on you for doing that. We're, Just a reminder that it's the preseason. <laughs> we're not about that here. This is our overreaction, hyper positivity episode. Yeah. So, and wait till uh, uh, week week three of the preseason. Oh, it's gonna man. be like that's gonna be like a regular game. I am so excited for week three of the preseason. <clears throat> Speaking of preseason games, uh, Teddy Bridgewater played in a preseason game. Yeah, and he looked pretty uh, pretty good. Yeah, you know, don't don't. Why doesn't why doesn't Christian Ponder get the same love that Teddy Bridgewater does? You know, when he left the team. Um, that's what I. That's a take I saw the other day. I think Christian Ponder is kind of. Mm, I don't know. I was going to call Christian him a turd, Ponder, but it's, it's probably because he's bad. Yeah, he wasn't very good. It's true. And I think most of like the people that are excited about about Teddy or were excited about it's because he's bad. Yeah, I'm <laughs> sorry, that would just got me off guard. Um, but I think most people were happy to see Teddy. Like they, most people didn't even care if he played good or, or not. They just wanted to see him like drop back and pass more than once. Yeah, you know, he was in he was in there for a good portion of the game and looked like a pretty good quarterback and. Um, pretty sure a team like Tampa Bay or Miami or even Jacksonville, I conveniently just named all three Florida teams because mm-hmm. that's where Teddy Bridgewater is from, um, you know, might consider calling the Jets and being like, hey, we'll give you a fourth round pick or a fifth round pick because Teddy looks like he's still got some football left in him. He definitely does. I was very, very happy. I didn't, I like, that was appointment viewing for me. I, like, made sure that I was watching when Teddy Bridgewater came back. Because if you'll remember, the last time we saw him, any pictures, he still had tape on his knee, even though he was just hanging out with, like, in street clothes by a cart. Like, oh, man. He wore, yeah, he wore a brace, obviously, on his surgically repaired knee. Yeah, and you should, because it almost fell off. (laughs) He should wear that for the rest of his life. All the time, yeah. Um, That's just what you wear. But I guess I saw some stuff where he's worked on like his drop back with a uh, coach and like adjusted it to so that there's not so much you know weight on his his leg and stuff like that so he's he's he i think he's still got a pretty good good future in the nfl yeah i don't know if he is destined to be a long-term starter in the league but he sure feels like the kind of guy who could be productive enough and will work hard enough and is good in the locker room, where he, at the very least, is going to oh, yeah. be a good backup for a long time. Yeah, he's got he's got the. I think he still has the potential to be like a, a starter for a bunch of years. But I think right now you could probably look at him as a type of guy, kind of like maybe like a Jeff Garcia, where they yeah. have like a, yeah. a couple string of of good years later in their career. Yeah, where they were more you know established, somebody some guy like that, where like. They had good years. They yeah. weren't like Hall of Famer, but but that's a high quality NFL career. That's yeah. Like when that's you're a, when yeah. you're trying I to think. be a pro football player, telling having the Jeff Garcia, that's good. I think that's. A I win. think most most quarterbacks who come to the NFL would be happy to have the career mm-hmm. that Jeff Garcia. Had, so. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, let's leave preseason alone for a little bit. And let's discuss some of the news that took place uh, since we talked last. Specifically, first of all, Nick Easton has a bulging disc, or had, past tense, because he had surgery on it. And now I assume it's not bulging uh, anymore. Good word. Good words didn't slip up there. Yeah. I I have to. You don't work for ESPN. You got to enunciate it. Like, yeah. Yeah, he had a disc, yeah, like a bulging disc in his neck, I believe. So he had surgery on that, and he, well, not reportedly, he was put on IR today, today yep. Monday. Um, so he's pretty much done for the season. I, I'm not sure if they will do the designated for return thing or whatever, but yeah, I would imagine from all the reports, it says that he's done for the year, um, which is unfortunate for him because I think he only signed a one-year deal with the Vikings. Brutal. So he might be, depending on, I don't know how all that contract stuff works, like if it'll roll over in the next year or not, because he didn't he didn't play in a preseason game, but he did practice. Yeah. So I, I don't know how that's all going to work. No um, idea. But it's, yeah. He's still young, though. I think he's like 
26. So he's still got plenty of career, but I mean, yeah. I'm sure the Vikings back would like problem. to keep him around, but yeah, neck, neck and back problems for an, an offensive lineman. Is, it's not good. Not good at all. Uh, does this raise your concern level for the offensive line? Now that we have, now that we know that he's going to be out for the season, not at no, all. I, no, no. I saw a lot of people not, I mean, a little, a tiny bit, but yeah. When it's left guards, interior offensive linemen. Yes. Um, you know, that's an easy, not easy, but a easier position to fill than like left tackle or right yes. tackle, even center. It um, is the easiest and, position to fill. If you could choose yeah. a position on the offensive line that you like, okay, we'll take an injury here, that's the one yeah. you pick as an interior. And guard. stop acting like Nick Easton was like an all pro guard last year. Like he had a good grade from pro football focus. Ooh, that, that, that always gets me. You know what I think excited. had a lot to do with it was at the end of the year, I don't remember what interview it was, but Mike Zimmer went on some, did an interview where he said that he didn't realize how important Nick Easton was to the offense until he was injured and he watched all the film and blah, blah, blah. And I think that is kind of turning people's opinion. I think that is giving Nick Easton a, a more, yeah, I, I don't know. I think I had a lot. I think to it do feels with, like a larger loss to people. I guess there was more than just his injury though. Last year on the offensive line, they had you know, Elfline was dealing with stuff, and Riley yeah. Reef was out for a game, and then Remmers was out. So like, it wasn't just Easton why the, no. offense, the offensive line was banged up, and then they went against a good, you know, Eagles defensive line, and yeah, even the the Saints with Cam Jordan and stuff. They had some good pass rushers, but like For sure. I just don't I don't people are freaking out because Nick Easton is out and I'm like I really don't if they put Danny Isidore there or Tom Compton I really don't think the drop off is going to be that huge between Nick Easton and whoever replaces him. Yeah. So I wouldn't disagree with that. I will say this though, I feel a lot less worried about the offensive line situation after what I saw Saturday. from Saturday. Yes. Cause yeah. I, cause well, if you just look at it on paper, it's your starter and he's out for the year on a position that most people are already kind of panicky, kind of panicky yeah. about because of the injury situation. It's so like, I get the reaction to it, but I, I think you're exactly right. I just don't, yeah. I don't, not that he's a bad player or not that no. you wouldn't no. choose to have him there if you could, cause you would. And that's why he's starting. But I but think people are acting to, like he's, He's a Hall of Famer. Totally. And to to think that you can't find a replaceable backup to, like, yeah. step in and do – I think they'll be fine from a production standpoint. And I think yeah, Saturday I don't, helped help that along, I guess. The offensive line was a concern before his injury, and it's still a concern after it. And I don't yeah. really think the concern level has really changed that much with Easton out and – John D. Filippo is a smart guy. He's not going to – whoever replaces Eason, he's not going to put that person in a position to do stuff that that guy's not capable of doing. So, yeah. um, Also on the Easton thing, he gets moved to IR. They bring in this Caleb Jones, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Caleb Jones. Camp, camp Uh Yeah, Camp Odd. He's I was just – that was what I was going to say. Actual Caleb pra- Johnson. Johnson, I'm sorry. Actual Jones, practical – Depth or camp body just to get somebody in there uh, so they have enough guys to practice. I, I think it's camp body for now. I mean, did just, you see the list of that kid? He's played for Cleveland. He's played for Kansas City. Yeah, he's been to I don't Arizona. think he's ever played. I don't think he's ever played a game. Yeah, poor guy's like been all teams. over the place. So whatever. It's NFL life of a backup. That's right. In the NFL. Sign him up. But still getting, still getting jobs. So mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, he could emerge, I guess. But you know, we'll see. He was working with. The, I guess he was working with the second team. Already. Oh, really? Camp. Wow. Okay. So, but I don't know if that's hmm. because of other things, uh, depth wise and stuff. Because I know Remmer, Mike Remmers returned today from his ankle injury. He okay. practiced. Um, I did not know that. Only, that's exciting. He only, yeah, he only participated in individual drills and didn't do the team stuff. So he's working his way back slowly. But that's a good sign, though, that he's on the yeah, field. Because when I was there before, last like, week, he was not even. He wasn't yeah, over there. As we've talked before is his ankle injury is not thought to be anything serious or just using him back in because I don't really feel like getting him more hurt in the preseason yeah uh quick hypothetical you are the head coach of the Vikings you saw what you saw on Saturday 
do you adjust how much you're playing the starters and how much you're playing the line because of injuries, because of depth concerns, because you don't want Kirk Cousins to get injured? That was a very common, or I don't want to say very common, but that was something I read repeatedly before the game on Saturday was, do you not even play Kirk Cousins because his offensive line is going to be bad? I saw what Judd Zoli had put that out. Oh, did he? Was that Judd? Cousins shouldn't play. Yeah, I think he's the one that said they should sit Cousins. Okay, but, oh, that explains why. I saw a bunch of tweets about it. And but, I was uh, by that, but that makes more sense. This guy's got to get reps, too. Like, if you're a starter, you got to get reps, too. You can't just... Kirk Cousins, sorry, he's not Drew Brees. He's not Tom Brady. He's not Aaron Rodgers. You can't just sit out for... Psh, now with that kind uh, of an attitude, he's not. <laughs> not right, bro. Not right now. He could be. But he's, you know... He needs, he's with a new team. He's got a new get team, used new to, offensive coordinator, yeah. new wide receivers. Got to get used to throwing in these guys in like real game situations, getting up to the line, adjusting calls, and all that stuff. So yeah, you know, I'm not, no, I'm not against not playing him so he doesn't get hurt. It's yeah. part of football. And, and it's not Kirk like this Cousins, is... and Kirk Cousins. It's not like he's coming off of two years of ACL, torn ACLs, and all that yeah. stuff. He's he's hasn't missed a game in like four years or he's like 37 years old and he's like this is old had been doing this yeah. for he's a young dude yeah. he wants to play let him play he, he's not a guy that usually puts himself in in harm's way of getting injured and stuff when he runs he's usually sliding so mm-hmm. 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 um what else digs and roads kind of fought um and that resulted in them not participating in the last yeah, half of that practice and then they were all back and buddy buddy the next day yeah. not even a real oh. news thing but i'm i'm actually i would rather see that than anything because those guys are super competitive and that it gets on i'm sure they're the play of each other like because i think it came on after a day when like digs beat uh, Rhodes for a deep ball, and then and yes. then Rhodes shut down a couple dudes. So both of them were, you know, going at it. Um, were you there? I was. I saw it brewing for several plays, and then they had to be like separated. And I asked, there was like a group of uh, media writer folk, and I was like, "Is that?" And they're like, "That's yeah, they do that." That they didn't even like. They honestly were like, "That's psh, yeah." That, they'll do that, that again tomorrow too. Because I I noticed that like nothing was like reported on it, and then mm-hmm. I assumed that that's because it usually happens. Yeah, and nobody guys, so. yeah nobody thought twice about it, and then they weren't <laughs> out for the second thing. It was like, oh, they whoops. But yeah, it wasn't. It's very strange. I've been doing. I've been like reporting, talking about this on videos and all that stuff. And every time I do it, I just kind of feel a little bit dumber because it's not even that it's not a big deal. And I'm not even really quite sure that that was the reason they were sitting. No. And it was like, he, it seemed like Zimmer used it as a reminder that they're, even though they're young, they're leaders of the team and they kind of have to, I'm sure, Rhodes is like, oh, you got your money now, you big, big timer. I'm sure he said something along the lines. I'm sure. I'm <laughs> sure Diggs wanted to prove that that was why he got it. Yeah. So that I, is. Where I don't know. I did. I did see Diggs on his Instagram the other day. He went on a shopping spree and he bought like a ton of Sour Patch Kids. So oh, that's uh. Money, money's already going to his head. Yeah. Right. Did you see his shoes from Saturday? I did see those. Those shoes. were pretty sweet too. His, uh, money Dr. going to his head. Esque shoes. <laughs> yes. Scrooge McDuck. Yeah. yeah. Swimming in the bank. Um, what else do we need to talk about? Richie Incognito. Wow. Oh, yeah. Wow, man. Wow. That was a that came out of left field. What I just don't yeah. even well, we talked a little bit about before we started recording this, but like it's not funny to me anymore. Before it oh, was yeah. a little bit funny and now it's not well, funny. It's he I just we'll feel through. bad for the dude and he's well, so he said that, like in an interview with TMZ or something, yep. like last week, yes, a couple weeks ago, that that Seattle and Minnesota were like two of the teams he's have been contacting him or whatever. And, then, and if you listen to that interview, it was Minnesota, um, Seattle. Like he was yeah. Minnesota was the first. It was no yeah. hesitation that they were the and first. And then ones that somebody asked Mike Zimmer about it. I'm pretty sure it was Chris Thomason because who else? Um, and I'll talk about him in a minute. Cause... Yeah, did you see how awesome his tweet was the other night? Yeah. Holy uh, God. <laughs> and somebody asked Zimmer about it, and Zimmer was like, no, absolutely not. Absolutely you know. not. Totally oh, that's, that's, where his, that's where his... Tweet that. Tweet yeah, that, that is where it came that's from. That's great. 
That was great. No interest. Um, Tweet. And then Incognito responded with like, "F you, Mike Zimmer," and which he deleted later. Um, and apologized and then, for it later. Yeah, and then posted the the uh, contact that he had with the Vikings, which was just like texts with Tony Sperano, who was just like, "Cool, that's and cool." That to me, those <laughs> those screenshots like, hey, of those yeah, we'll texts. Yeah, we'll try and get you aboard. It was like, okay, thanks for letting me know. That was where it turned from. This is fun. That was when I was like, this isn't funny anymore. Now this is a bummer because that that was in in. So all that, which made it very clear that the Vikings had no interest mm-hmm. in... And Tony Sperano was a really nice guy texting this yeah. goofball back. Yeah. yeah. And then today, Monday, Richie Incognito tweeted that he donated $1,000 to the Mike Zimmer Foundation, which is nice, nice gesture. Mm-hmm. And then he tweeted like, hey, Coach Zimmer, you know, put your money where your mouth is. Like, Dude, like, what are you doing? You just don't get it, do you? Rich no, and now no team is probably going to want to get near that. Like, even if he wanted to come back, it is absolutely like, maybe, like, maybe the Raiders. Or something, but... Even that, no, it's it's absolutely breathtaking. How and he clearly doesn't have like a PR guy to be like, hey, yeah. don't don't do that. <laughs> totally, it's it's just it's it's breathtaking how delusional these guys can be and how how little self awareness they can possess you know like how is he not able to see how damaging this is to the pot to the prospect of him playing in the nfl again like how can he not understand that this is a bad idea for him you know he uh he did have like he had some like mental health stuff with the throwing the weights and stuff and like saying that like fbi or some secret services so he's got he's got some stuff going on in his head you know hopefully Oh, not jokingly. Hopefully, he can get some help. But like, sounds sounds like he's he's got some some demons still to deal with. But you know, luckily, he said in that TMZ interview also that he's going to be getting into politics. So that's good for everyone. Woo! I'd love <laughs> to have that guy making laws, helping yeah. make. He's a, he's a supporter side. of the current president. Oh man, that's scary on a whole nother level but yeah, yeah man i just he yeah anytime you got a guy who is uh threatening you who has within the last year been placed on like a psychiatric hold for a period of time not good the whole thing's not good no so i hope i i, yeah. I agree with you i hope he gets help but yeah i hope he does be, get help to be perfectly honest with you but he's I not hope we don't gonna be getting help him. I hope we don't have to. Oh, yeah. But he's not going to get help from the Vikings. No. Absolutely not. (laughs) I, you know, I think the incognito thing is interesting because it also gives a nice glimpse into how panicky uh, Vikings fans are slash have been about the offensive line. That even after... Some people are like... Oh, give him a shot. That's what I'm saying. Even after all of this, after all of the information that we just kind of went through, there are still people who are like, I think we should side him. They need help on the O-line. Yeah. It's like, he's got a nasty streak I think would help this team. It's like, wow. You can't. Zimmer's answer, Zimmer's answer was pretty uh, pretty clear how he felt about the situation when he was like, absolutely not. <laughs> yeah. Unequivocally there's, not. There's no, there's no chance that guy is coming anywhere near this team. Oh man, which is good because he's he's brought in a bu- he's like he's brought in guys that you know might have like some run-ins with the law before, mm-hmm. but never never found never really guys that are a problem in the locker room. Yeah. And he had one, and Alex Boone, and Alex Boone is no longer with the Vikings. Mm-hmm. So and was and was a year, yeah, and was cut before his contract was up, and like that was. He, so. We were kind of planning on him being there. Yeah, Mike Zimmer let it known pretty pretty quickly that you know that stuff's not going to fly. Yeah, Alex, <laughs> he's oh he's available. Yeah, saw that saw that name thrown out there. Call him times, up, but. call him up. We need help on the O line. I don't think we need it that bad. And um, I saw some people want to trade, make a trade. I was like, what? No. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's my favorite. I think is the Anthony Barr for offensive line help. No, that's my favorite trade. <laughs> For an in t- for a guard <laughs> on the offense, like the easiest, or not easiest, but the most 
a readily available position to replace. Earl, yeah, who's who's trading for a linebacker that's getting paid fourteen million dollars this year? I don't know very many. Brown's teams. got a lot of money, man. Like twelve or fourteen million dollars. That's what he's making. <gasps> Is Joe Thomas still under contract? Get him out of retirement. Yeah. Trade in to Bar to Cleveland. Lost. Get Joe Thomas on back. Put a ring on that guy's finger. Super Bowl. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Joe Thomas one he played tackle and well, two he, he you lost, can shuffle like, around. You like can shuffle. Pounds. You can shuffle. You can shuffle. He's already done the uh, offensive line, you know, diet. Oh, he's already lost fifty pounds. Already. already on the Burke program. <laughs> yep. The Jeff Saturday. Oh diet. yeah. All right, fine, whatever. Tackle, guard, that's interchangeable. They don't even. There's not that oh, no. much of a difference. The big point of this is just, just not worry so much about the Vikings' offensive line. It's not going to be as big of a deal as I think people are imagining it to be. I hope you're right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's. Yeah. Well, yeah. Let's let's move on. For I don't want to talk about it. the offensive line. Is it scares? You don't me want to have I, a whole podcast? On the sc- it line? scares me, and I know I shouldn't be scared. That's like my Viking fan is like I should be worried about this. This well, concerns me, and I should spend more time. I know. Well, pff, North Turner. And, yeah. I mean, you could go T.J. Clemens. T.J. Clemens. So it's yeah. There are a lot of examples of how how that's been ugly. Uh, let's move on to the Vikings this week. They play the. Jags this week, correct? And they are here to practice. You said, you said that very Minnesota like. Did I? Sorry. <laughs> They're here to practice. The Jags. The Jags tomorrow, right? <laughs> uh, Saturday. Uh, Plain lands. Oh, well, yeah, the oh, game the is, but yeah, the joint practices begin uh, tomorrow, Wednesday. correct? Wednesday. Wednesday? Okay. Oh, yeah, they have two. Wednesday and Thursday is the practices. Um, but. Which... I don't think Jalen Ramsey's going to be there because he's suspended for yes. writing bad tweets. I didn't like what the media says, so I used my platform on social media to say something about it and got suspended by my employer. Because he you know, used the word war. Oh, that he was, was responding to uh, the the tweet he responded to was just like a reporter posting a video of like a fight in practice, and hmm. he didn't have to respond to it like like that. But at the same time, he shouldn't be suspended do you think he's getting suspended because they're afraid that the vikings are going to make him look bad (laughs) no okay (laughs) something to think about Um, conspiracy theory to throw out there i think mike zimmer would probably enjoy watching jalen ramsey on the field yeah i'm sure he yeah i heard he went to uh did he go to florida state i think so did he i think he did so he answered yeah i think he did he's uh so him and Dion De- have some similarities. I think Mike Zimmer would probably like that mm-hmm. about him. I think Z- I think him and Xavier Rhodes are friends, anyways. Do you? What do you think the percentage, the percent chance of a maybe not the brawl like the kind that we saw from Washington and, and yeah, that was incredible. Okay. Um, what do you think the chances of a fight in this joint practice? I think there'll be some scuffles, but Mike Zimmer said today, as presser or whatever, that you know, he's talked to Doug Marone and you know made sure to emphasize, you know, we're not here, to, we're not bringing you guys in to, to fight with you guys. You know, we're here to just practice and, and get better and stuff like that. So I mean, that's just you know cliche stuff from Zimmer, but I think I don't think either, either team wants fights. But at the same time, you know, both of these teams have defenses that are pretty prideful and, and can be aggressive at times. And mm-hmm. even even guys like Stefan Diggs and Adam Thielen aren't afraid to, you know. There's going to be a lot of talking going on. Mix it up a little bit, you know. Keep an eye on Laquan Treadwell punching people in the helmet. Oh, my so. God, you beat me to it. That's my that's my hot take prediction <laughs> Like, is there will be a fight and Laquan Treadwell will punch somebody like, in the things helmet are going and will really, break his hand. Things are going really well for him right now. So that would happen to him. But, yeah, just – they they should make sure to talk to Treadwell and be like, dude, s- 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 you see some going on, just back away, back away, just get away from the mob. But man, but that yeah. that Washington and who was there's was, a fight. Just send Linval Joseph in and then everything will and then settle, settle down. down real quick. Yeah. Like, okay, never mind. <laughs> Party's over. <clears throat> yeah, I'm pretty sure there's gonna be a fight or not a fight, fight, but like a scuffle. Yeah, right there. 
Yeah, there will be some scuffle, some pushing, some shoving, some talking, but I don't think there will be like a fight. fight. Uh, That's right. Exactly. There would be scu- there's gonna there would be scuffles in a regular season game, like on the field with these mm-hmm. two teams. That's mm-hmm. just the way that they're both like hard nosed. I guess you could say blue collar teams that you know like to to run the ball and rely on the defense. So yeah. yeah. Um. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. Do you I'm, think? I'm do you think the? Do you think that Jacksonville is gonna take a step back this season, or do you think they're gonna be mm. conference championship mm. contenders again? Um, I just I think s- they'll be. I think they'll be a similar team that they were last year, but I don't think they can. I don't think they're a Super Bowl team until they get a new quarterback. Yeah, I was just gonna say that. I just cannot imagine them winning more games than they won last year with Blake Bortles. I think. I think the type. I think the Titans in that division are a sleeper Super Bowl pick. Whoa! Think, yeah, Hot you take. heard him here first. I've been. This. <laughs> they got um their offense. Their offensive coordinator, um, their new one, Matt Lafleur. He spent last year with the Rams with. Uh, their head coach Sean McVay, and then the year, years before he spent with uh, Kyle Shanahan. So he's kind of in that offense where like the speedy, you know, hurry up offense kind of spread spread offense kind of system. I think that's really good for a guy like Mariota, and I think yeah, Mariota's gonna have a good year. Correct and me then, if I'm wrong, but that was basically what he was doing in Oregon, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if he can stay healthy. And they got uh, who else? They got they got some some other guys. I can't remember. But and then Vrabel, you know, he's got a new coach. I think he's a little more intense than their last coach. He brings mm-hmm. a little more fire in there. And they got new uniforms. That's all good things. It is a factor, and I don't think people talk about it enough. Broncos when they got new uniforms in like '97, Super Bowl, Super Bowl. Uh, Utah Jazz, they got new uniforms. NBA Finals. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tennessee Titans when they got new uniforms. Went to the Super Bowl. It's a fact. Tampa Bay Buccaneers yeah. quit going with like the creamsicle orange yeah. and white. Yeah, they got good. Went to the, yeah, they got, got good. good. Went to a Super Bowl. Won a Super Bowl. You can go. You can go through a lot of different teams. Where you, that's you, it's the you know, if you feel good, you usually play good. That's so, right. That's if you look the, good, you feel like, good, and then you yeah, play yeah. good. If, I'm with that's you. why the Bucks, that's why the Bucks are probably really bad now because their uniforms are horrible, hideous. Alarm clock numbers. It drives me yeah. nuts. Alarm clock numbers. Why? Yeah. You paid somebody to design that. So uh, yeah, sleep sleeper pick. I'm probably gonna write something about it for somebody later on. But I, <laughs> one I, of those outlets. Yeah, I can see the Titans making a run. Mm. Oh, well, I think if if Mariota can continue progressing, and I mean he is so good, he's so fun to watch that I feel like he could. He's one of those guys that could like will a team to a couple of wins oh, during they got, the season. They added Deion Lewis this year too. Mm. From the Patriots, the running back. So watch it, watch out, watch out. For watch out. You heard it here first. Um, what else do we want to talk about as far as preview for the uh, Jacksonville preseason? That's at noon, correct? On Saturday, noon Central noon. Standard Time in, in US Bank Stadium. Mm-hmm. Uh, It'll be interesting to see like how I in Jacksonville. I don't know, but um, we see how some of the like Kirk Cousins and and Daniel Carlson play inside U.S. Bank. See, if there's a, a difference or something than playing outside. I, I'm pretty sure the second game the starters usually stay in for like at least a quarter, so mm-hmm. we'll probably see some some more of cousins in the first team offense and the first team defense um i think yeah paying attention to the kicking situation will be interesting because kai forbat didn't get any no kick kicks. shots at, at he did some kickoffs but he didn't do any field goal attempts or extra point attempts so if that happens again on saturday i uh, really don't know why he's on the team yeah um because at that point he would just be wasting yeah wasting yeah i'm yeah i think i'm looking forward to seeing how the Vikings offense goes against Jaguars defense. I know it's not going to be – they won't have Jalen Ramsey, and, and it's not going to be, like, regular season intensity, but it, they're still a talented defense, and yeah. it'll be interesting to see, you know, that stuff happen. So, so yeah, see if they can thread the needle again. Do you, and maybe, maybe even see Dalvin Cook on the field. Yeah, that is what I'm looking for is some of the injured fellers to come on back and start playing – and do you think if we have a similar 
similar uh, result, similar output from the offense. Do you wait until week three of the preseason to buy your plane ticket to Atlanta, or <laughs> do you do you just go oh, ahead it's right. after it's week right. two? And buy it's already been purchased. Oh, has it? Okay, good to oh, know. Yeah. Good to know. All right, I'll yeah. get on that. I'll get on that. Um, do you think Kyle Sloter should play with the second team? Um, no. no, I think there. Yeah, no. I. I I well, if you're basing it off of performance of the one game, I would probably agree with that statement. But I think they have the order as it should be. Um, but I don't know. It's hard to whoops. It's uh, <laughs> it's. I just have preseason. a tough yeah. It's tough. preseasons, and I have a tough time seeing what both of them are doing did, as did far you, as like the actual yeah. When you were at, at practice, did you? Like notice significant differences in the between the two. Seemingly Not a ton of significant lower. difference between those two, but definitely a significant difference between those two and Kirk Cousins. But when I was there, and from okay. what I what I saw on Saturday, I think they have the the order right. Yeah. And that uh, the fourth string feller, that Pujols, yeah, it's Pujols. Ugh, that he he probably won't be on the squad. Maybe he'll be a practice squad guy, but he. Uh, he didn't look so hot while I was out there. Name Peter? Peter Pujols? Something like that. I don't know. Peter's Pujols? He wears a glove. So, oh, so I was okay. all right. So I was like, ooh. Doesn't Slaughter does? Doesn't Slaughter wear? I feel like he does, too. I don't know. No, he's got the, the visor going. Mm-hmm. I felt like he wore a glove, too. I think the visors are the sweetest things ever. If I was playing in the NFL. Oh, yeah. Why man. doesn't everyone wear <sighs> can't poke any, anyone in the eye with those. I know. Wouldn't it make more sense, especially from the op, for the offensive lineman, to like have that going on? I don't know. Maybe it gets all... Like a year or two ago, this company was coming out with like new helmets and the old visors, and then like the playbook would come up on like the visor because it would Whoa. be like actual like screen, so you would see like the play that you're running. Think but about I, how good Adrian Peterson would have been if he could just flash the play up in front of him. Here's where you should hey, block now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pass hey, he's, he's been in the the news again too because of the the Redskins losing their running back, so his name's been thrown around there. Even though they said they're not going to bring in a veteran, um, but I think that would totally be a Redskins move to bring uh, Adrian Peterson they're known for giving it definitely would they probably have already reached it. out and Adrian Peterson was like I'll do it but I just don't want to go to training camp and they're like alright yeah. sounds good we'll see you in a week yep. <laughs> so, our guy. that would make um, a lot of sense for both parties unfortunately I don't think it's like the best thing for either party but I feel like they both are they both would think that was great and would be happy together so I wish them well when that news breaks yeah, a lot of people are picking the Redskins to be like a surprise team this year. I just, uh, I don't see that. Don't see that. I don't either. And I feel like they're. I don't, I'm not even sure if Jay Gruden's probably gonna make it the whole season. Yeah. I just think to put that much to think to think that were, Alex Smith is gonna be yeah. the guy that like sends you to that next level is a really interesting thought to me. But maybe that's maybe we're biased because I on Madden ratings, on a lot of these PFF stuff. It's they seem neck and neck, Kirk Cousins and Alex Smith. And when I see that I think, wow, what did Kirk Cousins have? But what did Alex Smith have? You know? Like, hey, you, know where, you know who also had a good PFF grade this weekend? Jack Tocha. I thought everyone that was, watched him play. Dude, that was everyone watched him play. He did uh, not have a good game. No. Oh. They need to start waiting what the impact of the game is on those stats. Cause I think that grade goes up because he got an interception, even though he gave up two touchdowns, but that interception was meaningless. And obviously if you watch the game, you know, he did, he was not the best player on defense, but he had the highest grade. Did he not stick? Yeah. He had the highest grade on the Vikings defense. It's bonkers. Um, this, you know, stick to stats. Pro football focus. He has some good stats. (laughs) Great stats. He's got some good stats. Grades? Not so much. Not so much. Yeah, he didn't look. He didn't look so hot. I don't even like when people say like, "Oh, his PFF grade was this and that." I'm like, I don't even pay attention to that. Like, mm-hmm. I don't care if it's good or bad. Like people are like, "Oh, you like it when it's good." No, I don't. I don't like it when it's good or bad. I just I was having I look this on the field. 
and yeah. see what I was having this discussion with a coworker today and it, it it those stats are so interesting because they were unless I'm recalling incorrectly, one of the first that were saying, like, Harrison Smith is very, very, very good at football, and nobody is, like, remember, it was like three years of us saying Harrison Smith was the most underrated player in the NFL. Well, Pro Football Focus knew, PFF knew, they knew. But then, they give you a grade, like, toe chose. It's like, oh, man, like, come on, you have to be able to watch that and see that he's not the highest rated player, or, you know. Yeah. I don't know. It's I'm torn because I really do like some of the stats and I really like using them. And oh, I think I like that the they can, yeah, I think that they can give you a glimpse into a lot of interesting stuff. But yeah, the grades, man, are just hard to like hard serious? To yeah, or just hard to hard to respect when you can watch the game and see something completely different. I guess is maybe the the most articulate way I could say it. Well, I guess I, they've always explained it like. The grades are based on the individual performance and not like like what they did on a per play basis. And and so if they did bad on one play, they, it could be outweighed by like them doing well on three other plays. Mm-hmm. Which I'm like, yeah, but what if the three other plays don't even matter? Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. You have to start weighting the game situation for those grades to I make. I think they do have a system where like more like touchdowns and stuff have more of an impact, but obviously it's not enough. Yeah. If, yeah. If that's the grades they're giving out. <laughs> well, all right. Um, I don't have anything else on my list, Adam. Do you have anything right. else you'd like to discuss? I don't think so. We talked about Teddy. Yeah. We don't have to talk about Alvin Kamara. Oh, he? yeah. And he used the F word, so I don't really know. <gasps> oh, you know? yeah. I don't know how to get around it. I understand why he said that, though. I probably would feel the same way if I was on the other side, but yeah. Oh, yeah, because he got lost by, you know, a miracle. Mm. But, you know, things are meant to happen. Bye, buddy. This is a rookie rookie year, too. He's got a whole career. Give me a... And he played pretty well in that game, so... Also, another hot take. I don't think the Saints are making playoffs this year. Whoa! There we go. That, is, that but, is a good way to end it. Careful when listening to this show at the end because your earphones might set on fire. <laughs> the hot takes are too much. Your headphones yeah. might melt. Deal Cars, with car speakers might overheat. That's right. Bring a gallon of jug, extra gallon of jug of water with you when you're listening to this <laughs> first this week's podcast. I couldn't have said it any better myself. I have to put a dis- disclaimer on before uh, in the intro. That will happen. And we also need a sounder for the uh, overreaction stuff. Three seasons! Overreaction! Hot take, hot take, hot take. I might do a siren, too, for the hot take. I don't know. We'll see. I, I'm not sure where we'll go. All right, yeah, bud, I week, will... But we'll see if uh, the Vikings can keep that winning streak going. You know, carry it into uh, Saturday and avoid falling to 500 mm-hmm. on Saturday. And, uh, you know... See what, what can happen. See what happens. Just, all I'm saying is you don't want to talk to me next Monday if they lose. Yeah, they don't want to go into week three coming off a loss at home. Yeah. No, you defend the North. That's what we do. Yes. All right, but Skull Bikes. See you next week. Go.